Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School. Today I'm going to show you a simple technique that uh, using Toscano Venetian plaster, where I'm going to blend two colors together, give it a light texture, and I'm going to blend two colors of wax over top of it. This particular sample that I'm making today is actually going to a client's home at the end of a very long hallway, um, and it's going to be just an accent wall at the end of the hallway, and it's going to act kind of like a standalone piece of art. Um, they don't have enough room to put any tables or anything, so they wanted something a little dramatic to draw your eyes to the end of the hallway. And these colors really pop with what they're doing. The owner likes it, the designer loves it. So what it is, is I took the Toscano Venetian plaster. Toscano is an acrylic Venetian plaster, not line based. It tints with any kind of universal colorants, powdered pigments, liquid pigments. Um, I tinted to a color called Lund Green. And then I used the white base, and I'm going to show you how to do that later in the video. And then I took two colors of wax. I took our old gold and our super sparkle and um, layered those waxes over top of this. So let's get started. Okay, to prepare for the, uh, or get the surface ready for the Venetian plaster finish, I've base coated the surface using our quartz primer. The quartz primer is an acrylic primer uh, that cleans up with soap and water. It comes in a white base. It's not a tint base. It's a white base. Uh, it sticks to anything, drywall, plaster, wood, plastic, ceramic, concrete, cinder block, pretty much anything you can think of, it should stick to it as long as the surface is good and clean. That's why we say do a quick test before you get to it. Um, it's a dead flat primer. It comes in white and it can, uh, you can tint it, but it's not going to tint true because it's got so much titanium in it. Um, and what I like about it, if you can hear this, it is not textured, but it has a, a lot of tooth to it or a lot of grit, so when that plaster hits it, it sticks to it. Okay, so that being said, let's get to it. Today we're going to need our trusty stainless steel trowel, preferably a high quality because we're going to be using white plaster later. Um, so the, the reason for the high quality stainless steel versus a steel trowel, we don't want that carbon mark to come out into our white plaster and then our spatula. So let's get started. Now, this is a... Uh, more of a decorative finish. It's not necessarily a traditional Venetian plaster polish finish. Actually, it's far from it. The cool thing about the plaster that we're using today, which is that Toscano plaster we use so much of because it's a great acrylic plaster, um, it's a medium. You can use it for many, many things. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply give myself a bed coat or a base to work off of. And I'm just going to cover the surface 100%. And the, the actual movement is not that big of a deal. We just want it clean. We don't need it real uh, super smooth. We don't need to focus a whole lot on any kind of movement. We just don't want to see a lot of trial marks, how we've applied it. We just want a nice, simple base. I know somebody's going to say, well, why can't I just paint, paint my surface green to begin with? It's not the same. It's not going to give you the same effect. You see it covers really well with one coat of plaster. We just don't want those chatters or trials. All right. So that is our first coat finish up these little corners here and then what we have to do is let this dry a hundred percent before we can move on and at this plaster we're probably gonna have to let this dry I don't know if I was doing a whole room by the time I went around the entire room with my first coat of plaster it's gonna dry so probably four to six hours so we're again we're gonna let this dry we're gonna come back a little bit and show you the second step. Okay, so we've got the first step of our plaster dry. You can see it's actually still a little wet spot up here in the top. Not a big deal for this finish, but we want it about, you know, as dry as dry can get. Um, I kind of left it a little damp, so you can see. I'll show you even in more detail here. So the thing about this plaster you got to keep in mind is that it dries 40% lighter. So the color that you make in the can or when you're mixing it up a custom mix and you go oh I really like that keep in mind it's going to dry 
40% lighter than what you see. So if you make that red, it's going to be pink unless you buy the red base. And that's one of those, uh, the Toscano, you got to remember Toscano comes in a tint base. It comes in a blue, red, black, yellow, green, and red base. So keep that in mind. Um, but for this one, I just use the, uh, the regular base. I picked a color from the Sherwin-Williams palette and I tinted it to match the color. So second coat is considerably different than what we've been doing. We're going to create some uh, interest and some texture now. And we're going to simply do that by taking the plaster, putting it on our trowel and just tapping it here and there like so. Creating these little globs all over the place. And then with a very light pressure and a decent angle, meaning the decent angle about, uh, about 20 degrees, basically you can put your fingers underneath of it like so. And that's going to give you the angle that we're looking for. What I'm going to do is come in here, spread this out, very, kind of flatten it out in various directions. And I want to get some of this little chattery stuff happening here and there. And the reason you're not going to go straight across or straight down, you're going to go all different directions. We want this very organic. We don't want it to look like, uh, we don't want to be able to see the pattern of the way you applied it to the surface. That's the biggest thing we're trying not to do. We want people to wonder how this got there. Just getting some more plaster. Now, one of the things I always say is when you do these finish, certain Venetian plaster finishes, is don't pile the plaster too thick because it could crack when it dries. For this kind of finish, it's okay if you go it a little too thick or if you'll hold, even hold the hair dryer in a spot to force it to crack. Because if you do that, you can control the cracks. If you're like, oh, I'm gonna put a crackle medium under this whole thing and make it crack, it's gonna crack everywhere and it's gonna be a little busy. All right. So we're just about there. And the neat thing is it's going to have a lot of appearance of a lot of movement. It doesn't have a lot of movement. I'm sorry, it doesn't have a lot of texture. It's going to have the appearance of a lot of texture, but there's not a lot of texture here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Clean your blade and you do the whole wall. It'd be nice if you're working with somebody that can help you because you, one person could focus on this part of the finish and then the second person come behind you and do the next step. But it's not that big of a deal if you just take your time and work with the area you're comfortable with because it's a, you're, not gonna, you're not too concerned about starts and stops and cold joints and overlaps because you're not going to see it. This is a really organic finish, which is a good thing. So now what I want to do, I'm just cleaning my tools off. I'm going to go get my tint base straight out of the can, no color. And while this is in that damp state, I'm going to take this plaster on my trowel, just like we did before. Actually, it's way too much. And what I want to do is the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to put that white here and there on top of those islands of green that I just created. And I'm going to come back now and smash them in the exact same way we did before. Blending them side to side, all directions, having people wondering how we got them in there. Now the neat, remember, what you're seeing now is not what you're going to see when it's dry. I know it's pretty bold. Remember, the green's going to dry lighter and the white's going to dry even lighter. So keep that in the mind when you're doing these finishes. That's why you got to make samples and practice and understand the materials and just experiment. And so I'm working wet into wet now and I'm actually applying some pressure simply because I want them to blend. And I can always come back and get some more white. I'm 
Oop, that's strong. Not a big deal. We'll just get some green and go over top of it. We can sandwich them in there. It's not that big of a deal. So we'll just take that one spot that's a little dark, or a little stark. Just take some green and kind of go over it. And I can even hit some of these other areas. I don't know if you can see that or not, where the green kind of broke it up so it doesn't look so sterile in those whites areas. here oops too much that's the fun part we can keep going back and forth and building it up and the biggest thing to remember is you know you're in control of it so the biggest thing know when to stop don't overdo it because you're just getting crazy to have a little fun with it crazy can be good but if this was a whole room of crazy that's an issue because it can just look like a mess. Or if you simply um, think accent walls. This is a little bar. I can break that guy up. Now I need this to dry 100% before I can move on. So. We're going to let this dry. All right. Now, we're not going to let it dry 100% because I do want to burnish this. So I want to compress it so I can get that reflective quality to come out of the plaster. I'm not going for a super high sheen, so I, can, I don't want to be able to see myself. I just want to compress it enough that uh, I can see a reflection or just hint, not even a reflection. I want to see a nice soft. Okay, so we're dry. We're ready to go with our next step which is simply taking a nice clean trowel and very lightly going across and giving a slight burnish. I want to get down to some of those recessed areas too. There's no easy way. You just got to do some work. It's just going to give it all that little pop and we're going to get that interest that we're looking for. So the burnish uh, trowel, actually I want to bring it up just a little bit more. So if I took my two fingers sideways, put them here, just come across like so. Give it a Maya moderate pressure. You don't have to kill it. We're not trying to overdo it. This is a very forgiving plaster. Very nice plaster. Very delicate. Easy to work. All right, there you have it. So simply, a light, somewhat of a reflection. There we go. Okay, next step. We're going to take the Italian polishing wax, and uh, this is the gold color because it comes in now. The Italian polishing wax, I've talked about it before, but I'll kind of hit on it again real quick. Comes in a clear, clear wax, crystal clear, so you can put it on the surface for a protective coating. Uh, it adds no color because it's clear but it does darken your plaster up so wax will darken your plaster up no matter what color it is but the brands that we have here actually come in a clear they come in several different golds there's like uh, gosh old gold bright gold there's an orangey kind of gold I don't know the whole list there's like 10 different golds there's like five or six different silvers there's a bronze there's a couple different coppers there's green there's blue there's pink there's purple there's red so we're going to take the wax, put it on a trowel, and we're going to apply it just like the plaster. So we're just troweling it on, and the idea is we want some of that wax to get caught up in those crevices. So it's going to coat the whole surface, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Get it down in those low areas. Because now, remember, areas like this, where am I here? 
the deeper the crevice is, not that this is even that deep. Um, I guess the more pronounced the texture, the heavier the areas are, you're going to get obviously more wax. It's going to catch in there. Think of like this is a railroad track. Here's two railroad tracks, so that's a depression. Uh, the wax is going to get caught in there and it's going to skim across the surface. So we're still going to get wax on the flats, but we're going to get more wax inside those little flat areas. So let's just finish this out. Because the idea is I want some real heavy pockets of wax here and there. Because that's just going to add to the overall depth of this thing. And that's what we're looking for. Lots of cool interest. Try not to block you too much. Now the neat thing about wax, not the neat thing, well the neat thing is what it does to it, how it enhances it and starts to pull this thing together, killing some of these other tones, or muting them I should say. Now, big thing about wax, it has to dry 100% before you can dry it. If I try to go in there with my rag right now and do anything, I'm just going to make a mess and smear it all around. Don't want that. If you put wax on too thick, when it dries, it dries cloudy because wax has moisture inside of it. Now this wax is a, uh, oh, I can't think, pine resin base. So it's not, the, uh, it's not a beeswax, it's not a toluene base. It's not, it doesn't stink like diesel fuel like a lot of the wax you can go to the local home improvement store when you grab it off the shelf. Oh, it's, no, it doesn't smell. Actually, it has a very pleasant odor that you could use inside somebody's room and you're not going to get loopy at the end of the day and you're not going to offend the homeowner with like what happened in here um, but I want this to set a little bit because I don't want too much wax and too certain air and too much wax built up in these low areas but like I was saying there's moisture in this wax because it's a not it's a paste wax not a liquid but even though it's a paste it still has something in it the moisture the chemicals um, and they're drying out they're evaporating out right now so the problem is if you put the wax on too thick, you trap all that moisture inside. You just sandwich it in there and you're going to get a grayish, milky color wax because now the wax moisture is sealed inside and it's going to take forever to dry out. So I'm going to take a flat rag, meaning take a rag, fold it up, and I want a flat edge or flat surface. I'm just going to kind of come in here lightly and buff out some of the wax. All right. Now you're going to know instantly if it's not ready. If you put the wax on the rag on here and then try to move it and you get this resistance, it's not dry. So be patient. How, a lot of people go, well, how do I know when it's dry? Just do the whole room or do the whole wall. And when you go back, it's going to be dry. So if you're an impatient person, uh, learn patience. All right, so we're just going to go in here and soften this up, shine it up, and you should start to see the wax, the gold bouncing off that surface. But look how flat this is. Can you see that? Now, we could say that that's awesome and we're finished, which it is fine. But now I'm going to take some of our silver wax. And I'm going to go over top of it with some silver, just like I did the gold. Ooh. All right, getting away from me here. Okay, obviously this is way too heavy. So take the rat, wha <laughs> trowel, get in there where you can, pull off as much as you can. Uh, again, I'm covering this 100%. Oops, getting crazy. All right, let's take the wax, rag, find another nice soft area. Because some of this is so heavy, I don't want it that heavy. I want to pull all that off real quick, just like so. I just don't want that silver to be like, bam, right in my face. I just want a hint of it.
Okay, let's see how that looks. So, uh, not too bad. Super smooth. I mean, there's hardly any texture to this. There's a slight texture. I'm talking slight. I mean, less than an eighth of an inch. But it's got a lot of just cool movement to it. It looks busy. Not busy. It looks textured. It looks kind of gnarly. And it's just going to make a great accent wall. All right, so now we're ready to polish that up. Now, the big other thing about wax, and I'm, if I've said it before and you've watched other videos, I sound repetitive. It's important. Um, Maybe wax one wall at a time, check it, polish it. Don't wax the whole room, go home tonight and come in tomorrow thinking, hey, I'm all good, I'm going to jump in here and polish this out because the wax is going to get hard, meaning it's dry. So it's going to be very, very hard. You're going to work your tail off to get it to look pretty. Um, and it might not even look good if you just let it set. So one wall at a time, polish it. Uh, what, put wax a wall, let check it, polish it. Wax the other wall, check it, polish it. All right, and there's our finish. Now these darker areas will lighten up. Remember I said wax darkens this area. It'll darken it about 30 to 40 percent depending on the color. Uh, the other thing you have to think of right now is all the moisture from the wax went into the plaster. That's why you don't put too much wax on because we need it to evaporate out and dry out. But the reason it darkened that plaster up, the plaster was thirsty. It's drinking all that wax in right now and it's slowly going to let it just dry over a period of time and be good to go. So we're going to let this dry. We're going to pull the tape off and then we're going to show you the finished product. So we'll see in just a little bit. Hey, okay, so there you have it. We have obviously have pulled the blue tape off and we have our finish. Nice and smooth. It's nice and dry. Let's see if you can see that. Highly reflective. A lot of that's because of the wax. A lot of it, some of it's because of the plaster. So I'm trying to hopefully get you to see the gold and the silver in there and how smooth that is. Okay. So there you have it. We just took the Venetian plaster. We made couple colors out of it. Well, we didn't make a couple colors out. We used two colors to blend it together. Gave it a little texture, a little interest with two colors of wax. Um, so if we went down the list real quick, it was the uh, Venetian plaster. The green color is, uh, I believe it's called Lund Green, L-U-N-D Green. And for this one, I used the Old World Gold, or Old Gold, it's actually, I'm sorry, Old Gold, and regular Super Sparkle Wax. And then uh, I just, that's it, all finished. This is going to be an accent inside of, a, down the end of a hallway. So the idea, I know it's, rat, it's kind of busy, but the idea for this finish is to use it in the right place so it doesn't overpower a surface. The idea behind this finish is that this is a standalone piece of art because it's a really long hallway and they wanted something visually just to pop. So this is going to do it. Now the one thing about this finish versus that wall, this is a representation of what the wall is going to look like. So it's a small surface. So I have to make it kind of busy here or not too busy, but I have to be able to show you what's going to happen here. And then when I get to the actual wall, I'm going to explode that technique up a little bit, probably about 20 to 30% bigger than what's here or represented here. That way it doesn't look, if I put this exactly like this on that wall, it's going to be a busy, busy wall. It's not going to be attractive. So I don't want a whole lot of crazy movement. Uh, I just want a nice interest. But on here, I needed something to start with. So there you have it. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Foe School. I ask that you check out the website at thefoeschool.com. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.